Good morning, Masaka Universe. Boy, I love the Champions League. <laughs> and yeah, yesterday's evening, at least in one game, again showed how great this competition is. Um, I know we have been complaining as of late of always the same teams. No, this is not happening this year. This is not happening this year. Uh, we will have teams in the semis that we haven't seen in a long time. Um, yes, Barcelona made it, probably Liverpool will make it. Uh, City has been there, but it is not the your typical uh, Barcelona Real Bayern lineup. And we're all happy for it. Of course, the biggest one is Ajax. Uh, this makes me happy on so many levels, um, but also sad because I know that this Ajax team will not stay together. And it would be so much fun to see. Have them stay two to three years more. <laughs> I'm not even asking for much more. If they could stay together, this would be so much fun to watch this side. But yeah, not gonna happen. We already have Frankie the Young on and I'm sure there will be many more um, going. But yeah, that they played a great game. But before we go to that game, I quickly want to talk the Barcelona game. Uh, that went entirely as predicted with um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer uh, plan. Uh, I hope he's a pl it's a plan. Manchester United. Um, Basically being in the tie for about a minute when Rashford hits the bar and then disappearing and then there's the quick Messi show, the I mean mandatory Messi show. I think we can call it meanwhile mandatory Messi. Uh, especially the first goal was a typical this was a typical Messi goal. I mean there are certain um, players that score goals that uh, it's a copy of one another. This was a typically Messi goal for me. Uh, the, of, of course, there's a typically Robin goal where he cuts in and then sh uh, fires it into the corner. The typically Messi goal is uh, almost similarly, but it doesn't cut, it's just around the box and then curl it into the wide corner. That's what he did. I mean, uh, uh, first, of course, uh, not making a defender. In typical Messi style, curling it in 1 0 Barcelona, and I think at that moment uh, the game was already done, done and dusted. If there were any, any doubts, only the slightest doubts, I think there weren't any. Uh, just four minutes later, he gets again the ball, and now instead of his left, takes the right foot, gets it on goal. It's not a hard shot, but the hair uh, gets it through between his arms and legs. A horrible goalkeeping mistake, but yeah. Thank you very much to Neil. We don't need to worry about Manchester United anymore. Uh, it should have been three, Sergio Roberto. Uh, that was a wonderful passing move. Again, uh, going through Messi. Uh, then Sergio Roberto uh, puts the ball on the net, but hits uh, the hair. If I am, uh, if I want to be positive toward the hair, I say, well, his positioning was good. But if you watch the replay, he's just standing there and the shot goes his way. And I'm sorry, there's again all the lights coming. We are soon out of it. Uh, early morning commute. See? Uh, gonna get better. So yeah. Uh, at that point, it was done, uh, done and does it. I have to say, a uh, quick jersey matchup. Uh, I didn't dislike it with the pinkish men, just United jerseys. That actually was okay. Uh, I still don't quite, I mean, I understand the marketing behind it, blah, 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 blah newspaper, pink pages, whatever, uh, so for that reason, okay, fine, um, but you know, if you're red, if you're a team that features red, I think pink is not that far off your color palette, so, um, I think it looked alright. Um, then uh, I think even Pogba had a tentative shot or goal. I mean, Menu had more shots on goal. I mean, it was not hard. Two shots on goal uh, in the first half uh, after zero from uh, Old Trafford. But it 
was still all Barcelona. Uh, and the highlight of the day was for once not Messi, but Coutinho with a wonderful, wonderful goal from far out, really curling it into the net. This is why you bought Coutinho. Uh, if he now can contribute to the game, and I actually have a feeling that Barcelona is really playing Coutinho because they know he is a good player and he just needs to feel it. Um, yes, the crowd is against him and I think his celebration reflected that. Uh, Suarez probably could have made uh, another one, uh, but also Manchester United had a, a huge chance. I think it was, Ale was it Alexis Sanchez uh, against his former clubmates, but of course, uh, just thing saved it. And it ends 3 0, uh, fully deserved. Barcelona is through to the next round, uh, which is they went further than the past three years. So always have that in mind. This was a big result for Barcelona, making it to the semi finals again since the first time since 2015, uh, when they won it all. So, and I think they personally they still look to me like the favorites. But let's go to Turin, because that was the that was the game that uh, if you had the choice, I personally didn't, but I, my only choice was Ajax. That was the game to watch. Uh, Messi, yes, I always say you can always watch Barcelona if Messi is playing, because he always pulls something uh, out, which is you usually fun to watch. But that was the game to be it. It started actually. Almost the opposite from the first leg in Amsterdam, with Juventus trying to stifle uh, Ajax's play. The commentator called it um, ordered, cha uh, ordered chaos in a way, uh, just for, for, for the reason that uh, the Ajax players are so well on the ball that if they can create a little bit of chaos, uh, they are starting moving around the positions, and that's the chaotic part of it. So, yeah. That was uh, it was interesting to see. I mean, Juve didn't get many chances. Actually, the first chance almost fell to Ajax in the 20th minute. I mean, for the first time, they kind of uh, got through the box, but uh, never got a shot. A shot really off. Um, then Dybala, I think, had a shot on goal. But you know, Dybala in the last few years looked like one of the best players uh, that Juve has, and. Uh, Really strong player this season is completely off and probably will, will be sold and I probably go to Ronaldo because now every, every, everyone knows Ronaldo is the uh, focal point of the attack so yeah that's where a great player like Dybala goes off and he doesn't have a good season as well so yeah uh, Juve takes a deserved lead through Ronaldo corner kick uh, he makes a nice run around the defenders uh, Ajax Defender is actually fall, fall for example, he tripped over his own uh, or less. I think Bonucci really, uh, they looked at it at war and Bonucci really didn't do much and Ronaldo could have had a free header into the net and you think, oh yeah, now Juventus really had asserted themselves on to the game, they get the lead. Um, this is probably going only one way, but Ajax called itself back and you know, they, uh, for the first 20, 20 minutes, Ajax was not on, on the field. But then, you already can see when Ronaldo scored already the goal, it was already a lot more even uh, in uh, play. And so, for me, the equalist didn't come as a total surprise. I mean, the surprise was that at the end, it was no other side, but the Gilio, um didn't run back. And yeah. Yes, he defended the corner, but you have to come uh, back faster. This was a um, pretty bad move, and then the, uh, the defenders play on the line. Uh, just not... I don't think that Ajax was so fast in uh, May Ming Tem. The ball falls to Van der Beek, who pokes it in, and I think that he at first couldn't believe it himself that he scored the goal, but yeah, the goal counted. And it's 1-1, they look at it, it was not offside. By the way, Juve lost every game this season where the Shilio played. Why do you play the Shilio? Why do you play him? Uh, I actually remember that he, 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 he was a bright prospect at Milan. He ends up at Juve and I think at the moment his career is stalling and uh, 
it is pretty obvious to me that Juventus is missing Chiellini. I think this was the one thing that you can say they missed a little bit the safety on the back. Uh, and that's how the first half ended and it seemed like it was a little bit of reversal from the uh, Amsterdam game where, yeah, except for the sequence. I mean, Juve took the deserved lead. Uh, they didn't take a very deserved lead in Amsterdam, but yeah, it was 1-1. And I honestly, I was super tired and I thought, I was always hoping, no, please don't let this go in overtime. I want, I want uh, this to be decided in regu in regu regulation. Uh, at halftime, I think everyone expected a little bit more of the same, uh, that slight advantage Juventus in play because they were uh, quite dominant in the first half. But it happened exactly other way. I think Juventus was maybe dominant for exactly five minutes and then Ajax reasserted themselves with their wonderful passing play and got chance after chance. That was the first one, uh, really nicely played. I think a chance by Ziyech uh, from the right that uh, Szczesny saved with a really strong hand. I mean, uh, that you don't see, he it off with a sharp shot and he had this hand strong up and saved that ball. Uh, a little bit later, he had to make another save from a wonderful curl shot by Van der Beek. That would probably have gone in. Ziyech then uh, overplays it. And this was the one thing that I have to say. As nice as it was to see Ajax play, a little bit they overplayed. They wanted to, uh, we say in German, they wanted to carry the ball into the net. Uh, this became very apparent when uh, Ziyech suddenly was free on the left. And instead of taking the shot, and I think you gotta take the shot from there, he is uh, passing it uh, towards the defenders. And that looked a little bit unlucky, I have to say. Uh, if he takes the shot, there's a good chance that he, he can take it. And maybe it was because he felt it was not his strong foot. But you honestly, from that position, you gotta take the shot. Um, anyway, Juventus actually get, uh, Ajax get their goal uh, from a corner from uh, Schöne, Schöne that hits the Licht, uh, who, this was, an, uh, this was a Puyol-like goal. Uh, coming from the edge of the box, rushing through the defenders, Bonucci not quite getting up there and slamming it in, into the net uh, between two Juve players. That dad was probably, probably even more interesting. Uh, it just this was pure will getting it in there, and it's 2 1 Ajax in uh, 67th or something like that. And again, we have a lot of sun here. Oops, here you go. Um, and at that point, no, 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 on, on the wall, what was it going to be overtime, but you needed two goals and you didn't know where they would come from. I mean, Moise Kane at 1-1, he came in for uh, Dybala, who got injured. Dybala actually was the captain for, for, for the game, which I was interesting and then thought was interesting. Then Bonucci, uh, the worst captain since Scalotto, the captain who sank the ship. At least that's what the Milan fans said. Uh, became Juve captain. Uh, for me, Bonucci, is becoming an absolute disgrace. Uh, I think he only has his decent play left and even that is seriously uh, hindered, I have to say. So, um, he's falling completely out of my favor. Yeah, I cannot do much better here. But yeah, Moise Kane had a half chance. I mean, it was not more than a half chance. Um, that was there and you never had the feeling that there's anything coming from Juventus. In fact, Ajax made the 3-1, but this was just by hair of side by Ziyech. Uh, and that was that. And that was that. Ajax placed his home safely with a dominating, wonderful performance. Again, uh, perfect schooling of how you play the short passing style with young players. Uh, it's just amazing. Uh, I honestly, I have not seen the Monaco squad from two years ago. People say it's very similar to that one. Um, probably I didn't pay also too much attention because it was Monaco. Uh, 
you know, I understand. To me, Monaco, uh, I think for most people, Mo Mo Monaco just doesn't have the same ring as Ajax. Uh, Ajax is a major power, and yes, if you started just watching soccer or you haven't seen much, um, uh, you know, if you're young, let's put it that way, Ajax maybe is not that big, maybe give a power uh, to you. Um, when I started watching Ajax actually they won a UEFA Cup um, against tough uh, Italian opposition. I know, if, I think it was Genoa and Torino that they eliminated and this doesn't sound like much to do today but uh, any Serie A team in the early, early 90s that made it there that far was a threat uh, and it was much more even. So they won that one, then they won the Champions League in a super convincing style in 95. And probably if they would not have lost that many players and also down to injuries in 96, they probably will hold it on as well. And I think this last great hooray, if you ever find it, is I think it was in uh, late 95, Ajax at Real Madrid, completely destroying Real Madrid. Uh, something that uh, Madridistas haven't seen at that point in a long time. Uh, Real Madrid was not the super team that it was back then too, but they felt strong uh, going forward and yeah. So just from that point of view, I'm really, really happy to see Ajax um, proceeding that far. It was, and it was a joy to watch, it was not lucky, it was absolutely enjoyable. This is the true Ajax style and it's like, uh, uh, actually the players from the 95 team uh, over Mars and Van der Sar that are behind this rebuild of sorts of Ajax. Uh, Ajax is uh, finding their rules again of really giving the youth a chance and they're doing it really uh, I know that the Ajax uh, Facebook Twitter, Twitter account uh, said that the match Juve Ajax is the old lady against the future because the Tukumt is, kind of, is the name for the uh, youth sector of Ajax which yeah, sounds nice. Absolutely wonderful performance by Ajax in the second half. Uh, this team is a joy to watch and honestly I'm pulling so hard today for Spurs because I think Ajax against Spurs that could be a really open game. I think that if Ajax plays City and you know I thought that Juve is too strong which probably if Juve would have played uh, with Chiellini and um, you know feeling a little bit more urgency um, Juve might do it, or if I honestly think they shouldn't have played Ronaldo in the first leg in Amsterdam as well. But okay. Juve has, has the overall better players, but Ajax was the better team, and the better team should win. Uh, but Manchester City is similarly, but uh, let's see. I, it might be fun to watch. I mean, whatever comes, I think that semi final will be fun to watch. I think because. Uh, all the three teams that um, are in there stand for good football, so uh, that could be really fun to watch if they can meet on, le uh, on the level stand standing. And I, you know, I have been downplaying City the, all the time, and uh, but I have to say they, when they play, they play very, very well. Uh, it's just can they get this Champions League monkey off their back? Which we'll see tonight uh, what they will do against Spurs. As I said, I'd rather see Spurs against Ajax. I really would like to see that semi final. Uh, because there's more connection between those two. In, in, in addition, although, you know, Guardiola, who is very much influenced by Johan Cruyff, there's another connection. So, you know. Um, the other game that's probably the one I'll be watching, that, that will be the one that I'll watch is Porto against Liverpool. I'll, I'm in, interested to see that. Um, it will also be interesting. It will be uh, Barcelona Liverpool will also be a great matchup. Uh, that could be very, 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 very interesting. Anyway, good times ahead, good times behind us. I am beyond happy that Ajax made this because. That's just some 
romanticism about Ajax being in the semi-final and Ajax playing great. That's just a combination that cannot be beat. Well, let me know what you thought about yesterday's games. Um, whether you agree with my session, by the way, uh, Cardiff, I think, won in Brighton, so they still have a chance. Uh, but yeah, let me, let me know what you thought about all these games. Uh, whether you agree with my assessment, uh, how you feel about Ajax being there. I repeat myself, I'm beyond happy. And yeah, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and like my channel. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.